to do is to just put a little bit of a sky in. I'm not going to go too mad with the sky because there's not much. I've only got this little little section at the top up here. So I'm going to wet. I'm just going to wet the area first of all with a bit of water, just around the edge of this roof line. Not have to worry about it too much, but mainly the bottom. Don't need to worry about the top too much of the of the wet area. Just really where it meets the um, the building is really where I'm wetting. So a bit of hopefully clean paint uh, water, whereas mine's a little bit dirty, unfortunately. So just a bit of moisture there. Now I'm just going to use some cobalt blue. Just a little bit of cobalt, um, which is a sort of a mid-tone blue. Just use that fairly neat. And put some water in it, obviously, because I don't want it too strong. And then I'm just going to bring that in from the top. Going to leave a little bit of gap, maybe for some cloud here and there, just a little bit of that blue, just to brighten up the top. So I'll uh, get some tissue if I can find some. Don't want to leave that line there, that edge. Mop that up. Just going to tip it back the other way a second. Just knock the moisture out of the brush and just run this edge away because that's a bit too sharp and this edge as well just soften that off just going to remove a little bit of paint from there it's a bit heavy something like perhaps a little bit more light behind this building here perhaps those two bits of cloud can meet up Not to fiddle with it too much, just soften off the edge. Okay, that's enough. Actually, just one more bit, oh, having said that. That's enough. Okay, so that's my sky, dead easy. So I need to let that go off a little bit before I go on and do the next piece. So if you want to do that yourselves, you can do. Um, I need it to be damp, but not wet so at the moment it's far too wet and i don't really want to hair dryer it because it will um it will blow the paint around too much so i'm just going to let that go off for the moment then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to come in and i'm going to run a little bit of water underneath the roof lines <clears throat> and then actually start to block in the rooftops and um uh, come down into the buildings with some of those colors <clears throat> so this one's going to be sort of a pinky a pinky building. Don't know if I'm going to keep this one yellow. Mm, I haven't decided yet. Maybe yellowish, maybe slightly browner, I think. Sort of brownie, brownie colours. Because it's more in shadow. So we'll just let that let that dry. Or let it dry off a little bit. Just looking at it from the side just to see how shiny it is. Okay, while that's doing that, I'm going to prepare another colour. I'm going to mix up some um, burnt sienna, or if you haven't got burnt sienna, you could just use like orange or red and yellow together. But this is um, burnt sienna that I'm using. <clears throat> and also, I need to get some pink that main building so I'm going to use some alizarin crimson because that's kind of a pinky colour so rather than using red and putting white in it I'm just going to use some alizarin or if you don't have that maybe if you had like a um, like a opera red or Crim just crimson, we don't have a loose crimson, we could use that. And plenty of white in it, because I don't want it too strong. Oh, sorry, plenty of water, not white. <laughs> I 
don't want to put white in it. Okay, so that's my next two colours sort of, sort of ready to go. Hello, could you just repeat that again? Was... Yep, so I've mixed up an orange, so some burnt sienna for the roof line. And then I've mixed up some Elysian crimson for the main body of this building. Okay. Is it very strong, Stuart, the colour? Uh, no, 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 there's plenty of water in it. So the roof is probably um, thicker than the building colour. The building colour is going to be very weak, but the, the roof line colour is probably a bit stronger. Okay. okay. So. Now I'm going to tilt the board back towards me now. A bit. Not too steeply, just about five degrees tilt. Just to mop up this excess. And then I'm going to take my um, burnt sienna colour. And before I put it on, I'm going to take a clean brush and just run some water along the underside of the roof line. So this is just a bit of water under here, all the way across. Trying not to bleed it too far out into the sky. So all the way under there, and I'll do the same on the other roof as well. So underneath the roof line, just a bit of moisture. And I might as well do these ones as well while I'm at it. So a bit of water and a bit of water back there. And that's just to keep the roof line nice and soft. So I take my, um, my burnt sienna now. And start at the top. I'm going to start to work this colour in. So coming across, it might bleed a little bit out into the into the sky, but I'm not too worried about that because we're going to going to use some line later on to kind of pull it all back together. And coming down, and a bit in this roof line. And then we'll have some in this one. And this one. It's all of the same colour. Okay, let that go off a bit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to drop some of the same colour but stronger in at the bottom. I actually put a little bit of um, brown in it as well. So some burnt umber into that same burnt sienna mix. So it's just a bit darker. <clears throat> just mop up some of the excess water. Now I'm going to run a bit of this now under the underside of the roof line. A bit more brown, I think. Take that a bit further. Okay. So if you don't like all of this bleeding, I quite like some of that, but if you don't like it, you'd need to let the sky completely completely dry first before you do anything else otherwise it will just continue to bleed on you. So now we need to let that go off a little bit longer and then I'm going to wet 
or start to, sorry, not wet, but start to bring in my pinky color, the very dilute pinky color, which I'm just getting on my brush now, which I'm going to introduce under this shadow color next. So this is going to allow the shadow to bleed into this pinky color. And by tilting it towards me, it won't cauliflower up it will just give me a very nice soft transition from the from the shadow at the top down into this pinky color just so here we get a nice a nice transition so i just pull that down a little bit further then i'm going to dip into a bit more red now to strengthen it up a touch so i want the bottom of the building to be a bit pinkier and I'm just going to go into a bit more pink, just to the bottom of this wash, just to strengthen it up. And I'm coming down now to where the awning is. So I'm cutting round the awning. So this is in dry paper. So right down to where the doorway is. I'm just going to knock some of that paint off my brush. It's a bit too much paint there. So cutting round the doorway. Coming down to the ground level. Make sure we can paint all of that so it's going to go dark. Down to about there. And then on this side, pull that across. Pull that into the awning. All the way down. Got my little figures down the bottom here. I'm going to take it under the awning because that's going to go darker later and I want a little bit of this pink to sort of show through. Just cutting around my little figures. All the way to the ground level. There's a few little bits of light just under there. Keep going across. All the way to the side. And that's it. <clears throat> then I'm just going to mop up any excess paint <clears throat> just at the bottom here, just so it's nice and soft. So I don't get too hard a line there, like so. So that's that building. Use a little bit more pink just down there. It's a bit wonky. <clears throat> so then I'm going to just wash in on this main building here. Just going to re wet that to keep it soft so I don't get too hard a line. <clears throat> and I'm just going to re wet this a little bit as well. Again, for the same reason, so I don't get a hard line. Just pull that down a bit. More tissue. So I'm going to mix up a yellowy ochre colour now. I might just put some yellow ochre into the red, so it's sort of a pinky orange and do the same thing as I've done on the building on the right. <clears throat> Just gonna introduce this yellowy ochre color now into this building. Take that up a bit higher. So I'm coming down. Just being careful I don't go too far over into that building so it bleeds too much. A bit more ochre. Just strengthening the colour up a little bit. Continuing it down till we get to about the road height. And then I'll just wash it away. And then I'm just going to wash it into my shadow on this right hand side just so it disappears to nothing. Just let it bleed away. 
So just using clean water there. Just so it evaporates. <clears throat> and before it's dry, I want to do the same thing on the on these fire buildings. And then I can let you catch up a bit more if you're having trouble catch, keeping up. I'll stop then. It's just that I can't stop right now because the washes will dry out on me too much. And it needs to be moist to be able to do this. So I'm going to put a bit of a bluey grey at the bottom of this building to make it a bit darker. Perhaps a bit darker there as well. Just soften that off. Okay. And I think I'll stop there and I'll let you, um, you all catch up. So I'm just going to start off by um, taking some water because I want these to stay fairly soft. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the top section of the window or the door, whatever it is, the awning. Drop the paint into that so it's going to be more dilute at the top and less dilute at the bottom. So it should have a slightly darker bottom edge to the top edge. Just bring it down to the banister and then all I'm going to do is just some little slits just to indicate that there's a banister there. So let me do that again. So I'm going to wet the top so it's more dilute. Take my colour, drop it in at the top so I get a sort of a bluey, a very pale blue. Then I go back and reload my brush with some stronger colour and then I paint in the bottom section of the of the awning or the window, whatever you want to call it. And then just a few little slits, lines, just to indicate the banister. So let's do number, 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 number three. Same trick, lighter top, drop the color in. And then <clears throat> thicker paint or stronger paint, slightly darker bottom. Stuart, I've masked out the out outlining. Should I have let taken that all off? You've masked out what? Sorry. The the white around the uh, the frame. On the windows. Yes. Um, Shall I remove well, it? Well, if you're th there isn't any real white. I mean, the banisters are sort of whitish. So if you've masked those out, you could leave those masked. Um, mm. But if the actual windows themselves, I would probably remove it, yeah. Okay. I don't think you need it. So this one's got a, um, a banister. That middle one doesn't. Right, so coming down then into... I don't want to do them all the same, so I think for this next row of, of windows, I'm just going to put some little indications and I'm not going to put all of them in, I'm just going to put some of them. It's still a browny grey again. Oh, sorry, bluey grey. For this one, I'm just going to indicate some little boxes. So we're going to have one, two, three, and four little slits. And then maybe just a couple of little lines just to indicate the banister again. It's one. And then one, two, three. Or, and again, two little lines or three little lines for the banister. <clears throat> and then I'll do the far window. I'm going to leave that middle one out for the moment. I'll just do the far window. So one, two, three, four, and a couple of little lines. Okay. And then the ones below it, they're actually quite a bit darker, so I'm going to thicken up the paint slightly, make it slightly stronger. Still the same colours, so the blue and the, the brown, just more of it, a bit more concentrated. Just a bit 
Um, yeah, so slightly more concentrated. I'm just going to put some of these in now. So remembering there's going to be a, a kind of a banister going through there. So I'm coming underneath and this is going to be an open window. So it's got a sort of a gap that comes down to the, um, the railings. And then same on this one, this one's going to have a gap coming down like so. And then the third one over here, it's a bit narrower that one, not quite so, quite so wide. And then we've got this sort of a doorway sort of on the um, side of the Um, awning, so we're just going to put that in, make it slightly greyer. So I'm just adding water to this just to knock the, make it slightly less strong and continue that across. And then we don't even know what's going on over there, there's just some bits and pieces, just a few bits of dark. And then actually, what I might do whilst I've got this little colour on the go. Is just continue it through under my. Oops, sorry, I'm going to go sneeze. Go sneeze. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so I'm just going to continue this through. Put a little bit of the crimson in that same dark colour. So it's slightly purpley now, ever so slightly purpley, not too purple. Just coming underneath the, add a bit more water to that, so it's not too strong. Leave a few little gaps here and there. Just link that to that side. Just soften this off. Continuing across behind that little figure, actually we can make him a bit darker. He's actually sitting in the shadow. So under this awning here. A few bits of um, slightly darker tone, maybe a bit of brown as well. So it can all have to be one colour. You can add different different colours into this shadow. Don't make it just one universal flat colour. Try and have maybe a bit of brown, a bit of blue bit of um, touch of variation in it. Keep it interesting. So coming down and then we've got that little figure there. Maybe we'll give them dark shorts just to link that into that. And then actually we've got a shadow on the ground as well which we can get in. A few shadows come cutting across. Just at the bottom here. Okay, so that's got that in. The next thing then is I'm going to actually put in the this um, waterfall. Oh, not waterfall. Whatever you call it, the the fountain. So it's still a bluish, bluish colour. Just putting a little bit more water in the paint. Don't want it too strong. It's kind of a grey, fairly grey. Comes down. And there's a middle section that goes up. I'm just going to simplify it a bit. I don't want it to be too fiddly. There's a bit that sticks out there. I'm actually going to leave that the same colour as the background. And there's a statue on top. Um, and then I'm going to go slightly more brown at the bottom. Down here is going to be browner. So coming down. Got the 
next step. And then we've got two nice sort of terracotta pots either side. So I'm just going to make the same sienna colour that I used up in the um, the uh, the roof line. I'm just going to bring a bit of that just to give the splash of colour down in the foreground here. Okay, that's enough. So, as I said, I'm just going to continue this sort of treatment of this lighter shadow colour into this building. I'm going to populate some other colours in here because there's some reflected lights off this orangey building. So we'll go slightly orangey in this shadow. Continue across, and then we're getting then into this nice big, big shadow as it comes down into the foreground. So let's make a start. So the first thing I'm going to do is again, I'm just going to re-wet this top section of this shadow, which I just talked about, where it's going to have a bit more orange at the top of the shadow. Just wet that. And then I'm going to pick up some of my burnt sienna again. The nice um, goldeny, goldeny orangey brown. And start off by dropping some of that in. So it's going to be quite a warm shadow at the top here, coming down the side of this building. And then I'm actually going to cool it. So I'm going to put some glue into it. So a bit of the cobalt blue into that same colour. And then I'm going to continue that down, down the wall. <clears throat> and this is obviously going into slightly drier paper, or dry paper, I should say. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm going to go darker again, put some slightly darker brown into it. So it's got a bit more richness in the shadow. And that's going to come all the way down till we meet the road level. And then it sort of cuts across. And I might even bring that out a little bit more just behind that little figure that's going to be standing there. Along the edge of that building. Bring it across the front of the building just to indicate the, um, the road there. And then I'm just going to wash that out because I don't want to continue that just yet. So I'm just going to use some clean water. Just let that bleed into this, what is going to be the big shadow eventually. Just to leave that nice and soft. <clears throat> so then I'm going to turn my attention now to the, to this building on the left. We're going to put the windows in again first. So I'm going to use a similar colour, so the blue and the brown mixed together. So again, it's sort of a bluey grey, same as same as we used over this side. And then I'm going to wet the top section as I did before. I might as well do two at once because we kind of know the process now. Drop my colour in. Obviously try and wet the, um, when you put the water down, try and wet the area um, in the same shape that you want the window. So don't just generically wet it, try and oh, put my finger in there. Oh well, we've got a smudged shadow there now. Um, yeah, so you want to try and wet it in the area that the window, you know, the shape of the window rather than just wet it um, arbitrarily. Just a few lines there coming down. A couple of little lines on the banister there. Maybe I'll put another little darkish indication of something over here. Don't really have the information in the photo for this, so I'm just kind of making it up. Maybe one more up there. Just a little rectangle shape. Just 
and then coming to the windows underneath it, slightly more ochre. I'm going to put some yellow ochre into the sem into the mix. And I'm going to paint the whole square shape first. Just do this on dry paper, so I'm not going to wet it. Just going to paint it as a flat box. Coming across. Just a few, leave it a bit broken for where the banister is. Same on this one. <clears throat> Just leave a few little marks to indicate the banister. I'm just going to treat them all the same. <clears throat> a bit more paint. Coming down. One more. The reason I'm doing this is because then I can actually on the next layer of paint, once this one's dried, I can put the middle doorway in and then I can come over the top afterwards and then I can put the shadow over the top. Um, so that's the plan. So then I'm just gonna populate the lower windows. Just put these in. Again, just a look. Because this building on the left here is gonna be quite covered in shadow, I'm not really too bothered about making these too accurate because most of this is going to get covered. So just a few shapes. <clears throat> Try and leave it fairly squarish. Coming down, and one more. Last one. So the only thing to remember when you're doing these shapes is to try and make sure that that they kind of line up. So this box, and obviously this box, in terms of the bigger box of the building, need to come under one another. So this one's under that one, that one's under that one, and so on. Because um, generally, not always, but generally the windows sort of line up up the building horizontally. Okay, so, and then finally, I'm just gonna put a final wash of that same, same color just through the bottom here. We don't really have any information as to what's going on down here, but it's just a, just a bit of color, maybe a bit of blue, a bit of brown, slightly darker. Just to break up this, lower area make it sort of a interesting ish wash so another box here and again slightly darker maybe if you leave a few little lighter spots to indicate perhaps there's a few figures or something there and then one more time this one a bit darker coming down and again, a bit of brown, just to the bottom. And then we're down into our shadow, shadow. Okay. So now then I'm actually going to pull that shadow out. So not too dissimilar to what we've done previously with the wet and wet. So I'm just gonna run the brush along the bottom of those colors, like so, so that I just, bleed the edges together and then I'm going to dip into some blue now into those browns and start to work some of that in Just a bit more blue so obviously the paper now below this um, that wet edge that I've just put on is dry so you see where the paint is congregating with the bead that's how I can kind of control how far it goes, so I can still draw with it. 
I'm just putting a bit of crimson now into that colour. So it's blue, brown and crimson. Just to add a bit of variation. I'm also going to take a damp brush before I go too far and run it along this right hand edge up into the figure. So all the way across into that shadow there, shadow there and away out of the picture. And that will just leave this edge nice and soft when I bring the colour into it. So again, just some colours, so some blues, browns, red. Slightly getting darker as it kind of comes forwards up into this figure. I'm going to go a bit darker in the distance as well. A brown. Just work a bit more dark up into here. A bit more brown, blue. So really nice and strong down the bottom here now. Make that shadow a bit bluer. Oh, that's far too purple. A bit more blue in it. Just run that along the edge. And then I'm going to take this same sort of purpley colour and run it into my figures a bit just so they're a bit darker in the surrounding area at the bottom anyway like so okay the last thing I'm going to do there is take some we'll take some red Nice strong red, almost neat, and I'm going to give one of them a nice red top that's going to bleed down into my um, shadow colours while they're still wet. And this is important to do it while it's wet because otherwise it will um, just dry out too much. So nice and red there. And the other one I'm going to use, um, let's go with yellow. Because we're quite cool in the shadows, so I'm going to go quite goldeny, goldeny yellow type colours. Right. And this is on the dry paper, so this top section of the paper is very dry. It's only really the, the shadow in the bottom section that's very wet. So let's drop some of those goldeny colours down into the shadow, let them creep down, even tip it a bit more. <clears throat> so I'm just going to block this in on the dry paper and then I'll need to dry it off um, before we go on and put the shadow over the top. So I need to just put an indication of the banister bits. I'm not going to be too fiddly with this. Just very quickly mop, map these out. I'm not even, I think these must be like um, the uh, can't talk and think at the same time. Um, kind of the awnings that are closed over perhaps on these windows. Let's just do a bit down here. A bit on that one. A bit on this one. I'm trying to keep obviously the drawing um, under control as well as laying in the right amount of tone. Don't want the drawing to sort of run away too much. So trying to use the tip of the brush just to control those shapes. So that's fine. I'm then going to run a bit of that same grey just under here, just to break up this sort of um, 
window or whatever it is sort of area. Just gonna add a little bit of some verticals, a few horizontals just to make it into like a shop front type thing. Perhaps there's a door in this one. So that when all of this is dried, I can just run my shadow over the top um, and give me uh, an interesting mix of tones. I'm just gonna break up this a little bit as well. Perhaps a few bits of color just linking that to that. So that will do that. So I'm gonna let that dry while I move over to the right hand side and then I'll come back and then I'll start to put my shadows in. Um, having said that, I'm just gonna do one more thing. I just thought that I haven't done it yet. I'm just gonna put in the bottoms of these banisters. Cause I want those in before I, um, before I run the shadow over the top. So that one's got to go in and this one's got to go in. And I'll do the same on the pinky one. So into that same gray, I'm gonna put a little bit of red. And I'm just gonna run that underneath these banisters or balconies, I should say. There's one sort of there. And another one in there somewhere. Okay, and then there's a little bit under here as well. Right, so that will finish off that. Let those dry. Turn my attention now to the um, some of these little figures and some shadows while we're waiting for those to dry. I'm gonna drop to a bit of a smaller brush and something that's got a nice point on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wet. So I'll show you one first and then I'll, I'll do the next one. So I'm gonna wet the lower part of the body. So trying to angle the the wet area to a fine point at the bottom where the legs meet. So just with water. And then I'm gonna pull it out to the right, which is then gonna be the shadow. Okay, so I'm not wetting the whole thing, I'm wetting the bottom part, then pulling it out. So let's do this one, wet the bottom part, and then pull it out. And then I'm gonna take some color. So in this instance, I'm gonna take um, a dark color, just the sort of same brownie, brownie colors. And I'm gonna drop it into this little figure up here, keeping it quite dark. Let the shadow creep out to the right. And, uh, and I don't know if you can see, but the legs have already been painted by this bit that's crept in, so I don't even need to paint that. I'm just gonna put a bit of dark on the hair. Just up there, that's enough. So underpaint it, don't, don't fiddle with them, don't play with them, just, just let them do whatever they need to do and then leave them alone. Okay, let's do some more over here. So we're gonna have a nice bright one over here, I think. So again, just pull it down to a fine point, pull it out, pull it down, pull it out. And this time I'm gonna use some red again. So another red figure or red um, costume. Uh, clothing, I should say. Let's make this one red. Very nice and dark, nice and strong. Just let it creep down. <coughs> then I'm going to have a blue one. So perhaps this one can be a bit bluer. Blue top, 
<clears throat> and then I need some bluey shadows. I'm just going to drop a bit of blue into here, just where the feet are, maybe slightly darker. I feel like these heads have got a little bit large, so I'm just going to knock that down a bit. Too dark. <clears throat> okay, then I need another, another light blue one over here with shorts. I'm just going to paint the middle or put some water in the middle. Maybe a blue top. I'm going to use cerulean blue for this. So it's a light blue. So a bit of blue there, perhaps a bit of blue here. In these figures. <coughs> Splash of blue on that one. A few other little bits of blue here and there. Just to perhaps suggest some figures in the distance over here. Okay, right, I'm going to dry, dry this off. Now. Then coming with this colour now, I'm going to run it across the top of all of these shapes. Not the, not the balcony itself. Um, that I'll put in a slightly lighter colour. Let's run this down. And this actually comes down the side of the building. Actually, that can go darker in there as well. So this is going to come down the building underneath. It comes to a point there, then it comes back and then comes in. And then we go across all of these windows as a flat wash. Just going to tip it a bit more. So it's coming all the way down. Creating this sort of, or casting this unusual shape, shadow. So coming across those windows down, underneath, across these windows, down, and then right down to the road level. Bit of cerulean blue into that mix to cool it. So coming down across the whole of the shop front, down to my road and then we've got some little uprights and figures and things on the road. Just gonna break all this up. I'm actually gonna just wiggle this through the banisters. I'm gonna keep it the same colour, it's just gonna be easier. All the way down. Same on this one. So just using the, the very tip of the brush. Keep it simple. It's going to go much warmer now. So put a bit of red into. Did you, did you, what, did you, excuse me. Did you just wet it all, or did no. you just have a very wet brush? No, this very wet brush. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. No, don't wet it because you won't be able to control it. So more blues. So darkening up this shadow, coming across. Take my big mop brush, 
just going to run that along there just to keep it moist. I have to move reasonably quickly doing this, otherwise it's going to dry out. So really nice and dark, a few sort of broken bits, a bit more dark, let it granulate somewhat in the front there. Let's darken that up, it's too light. And then I'm going to take my rigger using the same dark colours, uh, the blues and the browns. And I'm just going to put an indication or maybe some, I don't know, some like wires or linking the two buildings together. Just some little bits of detail. Maybe darken the edge of the shadow up a bit. Try and link things together a little bit. So the odd post. So perhaps something behind these figures to link that to that. Coming through into our main shadow. So perhaps we could have some little, you know, rope ropes or wires hanging down. Coming underneath the awning. It's very dark in the awning. Just run some of these lines across the top for some drawing. Underneath the banners, the balconies, just a bit darker. Then we can have some darker bits in the windows themselves, some little slits. Just a bit more drawing, just to pull these balconies out a bit more. And again up here, perhaps the odd dark in the window itself. Okay. That's fine. And then into my fountain. Still with the same dark colours. I'm just going to re-wet the, just to make the fountain stand out a bit more. Re-wet the body of the fountain. The greys that we we um, painted on earlier. And then using the rigger with the sort of bluey grey mix, I'm going to just draw a few lines just to give me um, a touch more darkness to the fountain. Make it stand out a bit stronger. Comes in there. And by wetting it, it's gonna kind of bleed and keep it fairly soft, but um, make it more interesting with the lines, it will stand out better. I'm also going to put in some fairly dark doorways. Uh, maybe there's a bit of something darker back there. A bit darker there. Then I can start to draw into my foreground area with these darks, which will help to bring bring out some of these shapes. So these are like the I don't know, windows or um, little bits of detail in the background, perhaps behind the figures that are sort of sitting at the cafe. So a bit more dark in here. And obviously by using these darks to make the other elements stand out, hopefully the light will increase because we're adding more contrast. So a few more dark shapes there. Um, have a little bit more architectural stuff going on here. Perhaps we'll link that 
to some lines on this building. You could also put a bit more tone up into the edge of the um, the roof. Just to make this a bit stronger. <clears throat> a few little doodads on the top there. A few little drawing marks in this church. It's actually a window here. On the church. So we can put that in. A few darker marks there. <clears throat> Perhaps we'll have a little bit more, I don't know, maybe some uprights or something just to break up this edge. Now I need to put the um, the heads of my main figures in, so I'm just going to wet the shape. Put a bit of water on there, and then first I'm going to take some um, crimson. Bit of crimson, and perhaps a little bit of uh, ochre. So it might be a bit too orange, but I want it fairly, fairly warm in the faces. Although they're turned away from the light, I want them to have a bit of warmth to them. I will let that come down. Maybe it will give them some warmer arms. Remembering obviously that this is going to dry, dry lighter. <clears throat> Trying to compensate for that by making it slightly, slightly darker. To show. I'm going to mop up this excess. I'm going to let those go off a tiny bit and then I'm going to put um, put a bit of hair around them and hopefully it'll just bleed softly into the um, into the face. <clears throat> I just need to keep an eye on that so that it starts to get matte. So I'll turn that and mix up a brown. Just actually a brown, not really anything else in it. Something a bit dark. It's still a bit too wet yet. <clears throat> Just have a few more drawing marks with the brown. Just one way in. So we could give this something darker in the trousers, dress, whatever it is. Just darken that up a bit. A bit darker here, in the middle. Just to link the shadow in the um Figures a bit better, maybe a bit bluer on 
this one. Give her a darker top. Bit of a collar. Something darker there. <clears throat> I'll just give that a quick uh, line there. We'll just try and get the hair on it. Just some brown. No, it's too wet. Never mind. Like her turning towards her friend. The blocks in that off. Too too wet still. Okay. Dark as well. Make it a bit lighter. You have got to leave, all right? Yeah. Okay, Lydia. Yeah. All yeah, right. Okay. Thanks very much. See you later. See you later. Bye. Enjoy your badminton. Bye. Bye. Right. Just block these a tiny bit more. A bit too dark.